So, today I'm still printing. <laughs> I think I've shown you a couple pages that I've been making the last couple days and last week. Um, I think I already mentioned this, but the Rizzo printing can go really slow because you have to wait for every layer to dry a little bit before you keep printing more and to try to avoid roller marks, although sometimes it's just hard to avoid them completely. You can see the Rizzo behind me. I have pink in there now because yesterday I was printing blue and pink layers. So I have this page on the back. I haven't printed yet. I'll start doing that today. And and I have this page. Um, the back is already finished. Um, so I just have to print black on these and then those pages will be done. And then I can uh, start on the next one. I am on page four out of five now, or spread four out of five. Every page has front and back. I've been making, uh, I'm always really paranoid that I'm printing the wrong pages, even though I've double checked everything. So I do make these like dummy books. I think I showed you guys this before in like an old zine video, but it just kind of has the pages numbered. So this would be the cover. And then we have one, two, three, so on and so forth. But it's useful because um, if I take out these pages, I can kind of see visually, okay, here's 10 and 11. On the other side should be 12 and nine. And it should be printed this way. This isn't gonna be the finished size. The finished size, as you can see, is gonna be bigger. So it's like in between A5 and A4. But yeah, I'm excited. Always printing the black is kind of the most exciting part because it's the last layer. So everything kind of comes together and it kind of resolves some of the registration issues. Okay guys, so this is my paper setup here. Um, I just have the stacks of paper and when I put them in the printer, um, I mean, I could just put this whole stack in, but they would be a little bit misaligned. So I found if I take smaller parts and kind of push them together and put them into the printing tray gradually, it is a lot more like flat and, uh, aligned. Cause if I do try to do this all at once, I mean, it's doable, but you can see like this isn't perfectly aligned. So yeah, I have all my pages here, um, here, here, and then underneath we have like a storage area. So I just put other pages in the storage for now. Um, but yeah, I this is the fourth set and then I have a fifth set and the covers and then I have to bind all the books. So. And these are looking pretty good so far, so let's see what it looks like when we add the black. First, gotta turn on the printer. Okay, this one is one drum. They do make ones with two drums, which is amazing, and there are cool studios around Seoul that have those and they even print like up to A2 and stuff, but I'm just a humble Rizograph owner. So in the meantime, I have this used printer, uh, which works very well. And I just replace one drum at a time. Make sure it's aligned. Okay. All right. There you go. And this one goes back in the case. Close this door. All right, and then I have to add my paper and get my file ready. Can you guys see? <laughs> you can kind of see if you look close, the black and the blue are a little bit more lined up than with the pink. Overall, the image makes sense. It looks pretty good. It's a little, there are a couple places where it's off, but yeah, I am okay with this. And usually 
The first ones to come out are less saturated, like the black, you might see some areas where the ink is dry and it hasn't been pushed through. But if you look at the second print, it's a lot more opaque. So there's the second print. Here is the first. Yeah, let's keep printing. I'm just gonna put in, there's like 120 or so of these. I'm gonna put in like 120 and just print all of them. So you guys were able to see the finished zine and I like to think of it as a little bit of a cross between a zine and a book because this took a lot longer than I thought um, in a good way. I, I took a few months to really plan it out and make it special and include little details like I have this silkscreen band around the front um, to protect your hands from the risograph ink. This is risograph printed, this is screen printed. And I also made these, they're like a bookmark. Um, this is from the original cover that I screen printed and I ended up not liking it, but I cut up the covers that I didn't end up using into these little bookmarks. And then I printed with Risograph on the back with all the information and the edition number. If any of you are out there making a zine, I would just say don't box yourself into one idea. A zine doesn't have to be a certain way. It doesn't have to be a certain amount of pages, it doesn't have to be a certain amount of complexity or simplicity. You can just do whatever you want with it and that's kind of the beauty of a zine. It's just your self-produced project. These days I'm working on more paintings and incorporating painting within my printmaking or making more one of one <laughs> uh, pieces of work. So I'd love to share more about that process, especially as I mostly work out of my home studio. And I think a lot of you out there can probably relate to that too, because we don't all have big, amazing studio spaces. In the meantime, if you have any questions or suggestions or comments, please let me know down below. Um, I always would love to hear what you guys are interested in seeing from me. And I will see you very soon. But until then, Bye.